I had a crisis when I was in my late 20s, early 30s, where I had written a few pieces that um, uh, were good. And I'd seen some success and some attention, and then I just freaked out. I came along at a time when music had become so fragmented and so splintered and all aspects of the musical discourse uh, were being um, deconstructed. Rhythm, you know, pitch, form, uh, and it was being done in a very kind of purposeful way. When I was a student in 1970, the prestigious ideals of, of contemporary music were very severe. The correct way to compose was in this very intellectual and sort of dry uh, procedural methodology. And at the same time, you know, I was listening to Jimi Hendrix and Miles Davis and Aretha Franklin and realizing, you know, this is what I really liked. Uh, and it, so I, you know, I was having a schizophrenic existence as, as a student. My breakthrough, in part, was from reading Carl Jung's studies on, on uh, psychology. And what was interesting, he has a, a theory of types where, where he made these polarities, uh, thinking and feeling, um, sensation and intuition. Um, and I realized that, you know, as a personality, I was, I was much more a feeling type. And Jung liked to say that if you're strongly given over to one polarity, uh, your negative polarity tends to be undeveloped. So for me, thinking was this, this was the, the area that, that was weak. Um, so part of my breakthrough was, was learning to appreciate, and I suppose one could say in touchy-feely West Coast language, to celebrate, uh, you know, that feeling function. Fortunately, I, I, I think my thinking uh, function is, is strong enough that I'm able to, you know, put things together coherently. When Beethoven's young, when Mozart was young, when Mendelssohn was young, there were acceptable templates, uh, you know, whether it was the rondo or the minuet or, uh, you know, the, the capo aria. They were, they were very conventional uh, templates and you worked within those. So, but we don't have those templates anymore. We have them in pop music, but we don't have them in, in uh, this world that I inhabit. That means that every composer has to find his or her own very personal language. And that is a huge uh, mountain to climb. The idea uh, that really important breakthrough idea that you find in classical American minimalist works, whether they're by Terry Riley or, or, or Steve Reich or Philip Glass, um, you know, it was a very liberating thing for me. And what I, I liked about minimalism was that um, it, it reinvented the wheel. It found a way to take these essential tools of the uh, musical experience pulsation, uh, tonality, and repetition, um, and, and turn it into something new. You know, all of my music has, has been informed by these principles, but I could never really consider myself, except maybe in my earliest pieces, uh, as a minimalist, uh, but, but my music is informed by minimalism, just as it's informed by jazz, and just as it's informed by, you know, Beethoven and Sibelius and Stravinsky.